Anyway, we got this interview. They came into town during Turbanos. Another lovely interview. Um, they go by the name of actors. And uh, the people who know, know them. Uh, we talked a lot about promotion and production and all that stuff. I geeked out a little bit. Um, we also talked about Leathers, which is a side project from actors and what they were doing in the future. So I hope you guys like this. Just like the always, voices call. Just like the always, whoa. Twitch. Hey everybody here at Cafe Clutch. We got some special guests that are here in town for Terminus. We go by the name of They're from Vancouver. And I'm stuck on court. <laughs> it's all good. Oh yeah, they, uh, I believe you guys started in like 2012, right? Correct. Correct. 2012. Second. Get me out of here. Can you hold this? Oh, yeah. No, no problem. Yeah, just some technical difficulties. We're just getting them fixed up right now. <laughs> there we go. Well, it's a bigger. for the reassurance twitch um yeah they've been around for since 2012 i believe you did a remix like recently for that single right yeah we've released a string of remixes back leading up to the release of the reanimated uh, deluxe edition that we're releasing next month nice yeah oh my god sorry i'm just like looking at you i'm like oh my god they're here <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if no one knows what this is about, uh, I usually do interviews at Cafe Clutch, and then usually it's for the bands that are coming to play here, and it's just like a local thing type of thing. Cool. Um, this is like a nice safe space for a lot of queer artists, and a lot of just queer people in general. There's a lending library right behind you. There's shelf life books right here where you can like purchase some stuff. There's good coffee from BC actually. Just saying, from BC actually. Um, local brewer, we work with a lot of local breweries. Just telling you why I do these interviews. It's live at Cafe Clutch. We want to encourage people for these kind of like safe spaces as much as possible because we're losing a lot of them in Alberta. So we got to find a medium for stuff like this, especially artists, because um, print media is kind of like going down the drain. So our kind of solution, I'd like to talk to Jess, who's the owner that's working on those sandwiches right now. Um, <laughs> we were thinking about doing just interviews just so that we can like encourage people. So we do really appreciate you for doing this because we we just need this medium especially for artists to like know what's going on in the city and know where to go in the city type of thing so um yeah let me get started on these questions because i do have a lot um the first one i want to know is how did it just like all come together where did this band like where did this where did you guys form where did you guys meet like how did that all happen um actors basically started we were in vancouver uh, Adam and I were playing music together, and we were, you know, releasing singles here and there. But it wasn't until Shannon joined the band that the dynamic shifted and the kind of male to female energy was apparent. Because the music had had that in it, but 
but on stage it didn't feel quite right. So when Shannon joined the band, actually one of the, the major turning points for us was coming to Calgary to play Terminus Festival where we met Artifact Records and signed our record deal. Oh wow. Yeah, so we're really proud to be coming back and like headlining the first night and and um, seeing all the people we first met here in Calgary who were the first to really embrace us. And then recently, um, Kendall has been with the band. Pre-pandemic, she, she joined on and tonight we'll mark her 35th show with us after we just toured in the US. Oh wow. Yeah. Nice. How about instrument choices? What was that like? You just want, like for everybody. So why why did you choose each instrument? <laughs> <laughs> why did everybody choose the instruments that they wanted to choose? Do you want to start down there? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Um, I didn't choose. <laughs> oh. Oh. It was placed upon me. Okay. Um, no, I'm more of a guitar player, but bass is always one of those things that bands kind of need. So I've played bass in quite a few bands, and then. Yeah, I met these guys and kind of became friends with Shannon, and that's how it all kind of fell into place that I would be playing bass, but um, okay. it's growing on me now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say I'm more of a singer than a keyboardist, so I sort of came to playing keyboard also by accident in a way, but um, I love it, yeah. There was a, an opportunity for me to join some actor shows, and Jay had asked me to play keyboards on, on, on a few shows to fill in for a keyboardist that was traveling with another band at the time, and I said, sure, yeah, let's do it. And, um, yeah. The rest is history. The rest is history. But I, I, love, I love synthesizers. I love, like, shaping the sounds, and all that stuff is really, really neat. Just one second. Yeah. Apparently they can't hear. <laughs> Sorry about that. How about now? Give it a check, check. Check, check. I don't hear you now. Yeah, that's better. I'm sorry, everybody on Twitch. <laughs> um, we were talking about uh, the instruments. Yeah. Yes. Do you want uh, me to backtrack? Yeah, we probably should. Sure. I'm totally that's sorry. Good. Don't <laughs> make you repeat yourselves. Oh, now they're really excited. Sorry, Twitch. I really apologize. <laughs> Can you hear now? Yeah, they yeah. can hear now. Okay. They're yeah. like really happy. <laughs> One of them said, we'll let it go this time. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> oh, and if I just that, I will be rebroadcasting an audio-only version of this interview on my show as well. So, so yeah, yeah. She works with CGSW. This is Catherine Delirium. That's right. So. <laughs> if you do not know that. But yes, please, um, talk about your why you chose your instruments and... Yeah, yeah so I was just kind of saying um, I didn't really choose to play bass, yeah. but um, it's just an instrument that I've kind of picked up along the way just from playing guitar, and um, honestly, being in this band has kind of made me really enjoy bass a lot more, um, so it's been really fun in that way. But we've gotten to do some other things, too, where I've gotten to play guitar with other projects we've been recording, and Shannon's Project Leathers, so that's been really fun. So good. I was going to mention Shannon's project later, but... <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, keyboards was also something that kind of came into my life by surprise. Uh, uh, there was a different uh, synth player in Actors before, and Jay had asked me to fill in on some shows, and I said, sure, yeah, let's do it. And um, so I filled in on those shows and just really came to like the instrument. I like shaping all the, the sounds with synths and all that, that sort of thing, but I really love to sing, and so that's where I've sort of been uh, placing a lot of my, my vibe into mm -hmm. lately as a lot of singing in that too. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's been really fun. I love to sing backups as For well. sure. Yeah. Oh. For Adam. Me? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically I'm more of an actor, singer, dancer. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Gosh, just true. joking. <laughs> uh, no, I've been playing drums since I was a kid. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's my favorite thing in the world. And I started playing with Jason in a prior band that he had started after their drummer left, uh, right before Actors became a thing. Yeah. But I still dance. Hey. <laughs> Adam's a great dancer. He's a great DJ. He's a great friend. Aww. He's, Everyone say on the He's chat. like Vancouver's Ryan Gosling, really. <laughs> 
the little Hercules version. <laughs> yeah. True story. True story. True story. And I've been playing guitar since I was like 12, and I, oddly enough, I fell into singing by accident just because um, every band I was in, the singer was just so bad that I just slowly but surely started singing. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Shots fired. Yeah. I, and then uh, actors kind of even happened just by happenstance. It was like we were actors was just a kind of a placeholder name and we were releasing a single or two a year. And then I, what I found was is that, oh, there's people responding to it and there's people from all over the world that are reaching out. And uh, like I said, like I don't know if people heard earlier, but once Shannon was in the fold, in, in about 2017, that's when things really felt like they started to gel and the band as we know it started to take form. And that's when we started to see success. That's so amazing. Um, in terms of bands, actually, how many bands has this been, like, it, bef like before, before Actors, how many bands have each of you been in? <laughs> Kayla, do you want to start? Are we including the cringy teenager bands, or yes. are we just gonna skip over oh, them? Oh yes, okay. <laughs> if you want to. Hmm, I'll say about. We all have those phases. <laughs> yeah, probably about six. Oh yeah. wow. <laughs> Actors is my first band. <laughs> it's it actually. Yeah, for real. Are you what? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I uh, I have been musical all my life, but very very like introverted and shy. And so, like, I was always, like, a bedroom singer, like, didn't want to, like, was, like, terrified to perform. And um, I was sharing these uh, videos of me singing, like, really short cover songs on Instagram with an acoustic guitar. And Jay saw them, and he's like, oh, you have, a, you have a really nice voice. Like, why aren't you in a band? And I was like, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah, so through, uh, through Jay's support and encouragement, yeah, Actors is my, my first band. That's actually Amazingly. Amazing. <laughs> wow. wow. How about uh, drummer? Don't look at me. Adam. <laughs> Adam. Adam is in every band. Easy estimate, <laughs> probably about 100. <laughs> wow. Um, I would, me and Kendall were talking about this this morning, but... When I was a teenager, and I, I grew up in Whitehorse, in the Yukon, and there was a battle of the bands one year for all the bands. And there were six bands that played. I played in five of them. So that's just been wow. kind of my <laughs> life since then. <laughs> and, you, and you still lost the battle of the bands? No, I won. <laughs> <laughs> I won. I mean, the odds are there. <laughs> <laughs> the odds are there, though. <laughs> You're in like seven bands. You have to at the, least be one of them. Yeah, the odds were in his favor. That's for sure. <laughs> he, yeah, and I, I've been in about I don't know a dozen bands since high school. Oh wow! I do actually want to ask this question because out of all the like, just I'm in mostly involved in the Twitch world, and out of all the bands that I've seen, they've kind of given up on doing anything during the pandemic. So what? kept you going during the pandemic especially even doing all those videos i was just like they're still doing videos and like the twitch like we're like in a pandemic like it was weird i just like thought i thought it was cool but i thought it was like wow like, we still going on we just have no regard for human life <laughs> we're like pandemic be damned we're gonna make videos we're gonna go out we're gonna go out our way <laughs> no it's like our our, our our crew is very, we were seeing each other all the time anyways. I have a recording studio, so that's where we make our music. Um, we're in close vicinity, and the one person, we were working pr primarily with one person, uh, Wayne Morehart, who was directing videos. So they were all testing because, uh, for COVID because they all work in the film industry. Mm -hmm. So everyone would mask up, we would do the videos, and I just, it was either that or slip into a deep depression and wait for a couple of years and then once the pandemic eased up a little we would have been two years behind in the world it felt like so we just tried to stay positive and keep supporting each other and i think it was a really good thing to do so would you call your most recent album would you call it a pandemic album then or not 
I think so. <laughs> we, just, we just came back from touring in the U.S. We played over 30 shows. and With Boot one, Black, right? We, yeah, we played a lot of shows with yeah. Boot Blacks, which, we, which they're like family to us. Um, but everywhere we went, the, the size of the crowds had doubled since last time we were there. And a lot of people were saying, you know, the album was really important to me during the pandemic because I think lyrically as well, the album deals with coming to terms with, you know, love and loss and reconciliation with the world. And it, in, in a personal way for me as a lyricist, but it's vague enough that it, I think it applied to a lot of people. And I'm, I'm re re really happy that it resonated. It, the timing worked out well. well I, as I say, a couple more pandemics and I think we could be really famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Did you see the Twitch impact you had, though? Like, how big you got on just from Twitch alone? Yeah. Like, it, like even, like, you saw the emotes that, yeah. like, I think it was Restricted Entertainment mm -hmm. yeah. had that emote. Yeah. It was, like, every time someone played one of your songs, it was, like, 11,000 of the actor's emote. Yeah, yeah. That, so. that's another thing. Sorry, I don't mean to monopolize the conversation if you guys want to jump oh, in. Please do. It, it, <laughs> that's another thing that was really noticeable on tour was people saying, oh, I discovered you through Twitch and this DJ. And we've always had a really good um, rapport with DJs. The music, I think, is just dancey enough and, and in, in that vein that it, it's been embraced in those communities. And, and that that's been a really positive thing for us because every musician is looking for new and different ways of adjusting to social media and how to get your music heard and, and to you know, grow your career so you can continue to release music and, and embrace your, your fans. Yeah, like literally <laughs> someone just told me on the Twitch chat, this is how I heard of actors and he's like from Germany. So I have a lot of people on my Twitch from Germany. I, I'm on like a German team called Der Schwarm I work at a German bakery called Cafe Clutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just Germany loves me. <laughs> but, um. Vielen Dank. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, um, a lot of people, especially even Chris, even, um, from Dickens, was probably the one that, like, really, really, really got me into you guys. Just playing them all the time. I, I used to, like, I don't know what happened. I try, I used to hang out on. Um, Chris's Twitch all the time, and Chris would be like, "This is this is the band," like, because like I think it's just, I think Chris feels that because what he told me is like you guys kind of grew up in the same era. Yeah. Yeah, and it was Chris like, and I did. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. not them. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, we have the same hairstyle. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> mentioned last time we talked that one of your major influences was 80s music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thousand percent. You would mention David Bowie that's in that corner right yes, there, maybe? I've already, already spied that. <laughs> 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 I just knew that. I just... Um, oh, sorry. He's from the U.S., but still, there are people from Germany that, like, found out about it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, it's, like, a huge thing. There's this person from... Bolivia, I believe. Her DJ name is DJ Sister Pain. She is obsessed with actors. Like, wow. obsessed. That's cool. So, yeah. it, it's gotten really far. And just like being on Twitch alone. So, I, I think I'm kind of happy I'm doing this on Twitch. I totally forgot how important it was, actors was, during that time. A lot of, like, there was really, it was kind of hard to find music. And as me being a musician, it was kind of hard to make music because you just weren't in that spirit. Sure. So to like truck on through that spirit, like how did, how did like, you just kind of like, were you just like deer in headlights just kept going or was it like, what do we do? <laughs> well, as the primary songwriter for me, I feel like I've been battling my own inner pandemic crisis my whole life so it kind of was business as usual for me okay it was like yeah you know i'm at my studio pre-pandemic isolated from people the only thing that was really hard for us was not being able to tour we had to cancel and postpone over 80 dates that just kept pushing back and back 
that's the one thing that really weighed on us. Like, oh, will people still come out to the shows? Will people still like us? Will what we're doing be relevant? You know, is the crowd going to be smaller? Uh, you know, because you you put your heart and soul into it, and the pandemic seemed to really pull the carpet out from from the from the whole world of touring, which it did. But as we've seen, people are hungry for live music again. People are returning to live music, and so. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it other than like obviously I was in shock half the pandemic. I was I can't believe this is happening, and I thought there's a lot of people that look to actors as a form of uh, uh, solace and strength, and they're looking to us with the music to to get some sort of meaning during these times. So I thought, well, how would I want my my musical uh, influences to act? I thought, well we have to at least put on the face of, of some sort of strength, or at least we're still here to entertain you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was hard. And the other option was not to create music, and then I can't even imagine the how depressed I would have got, I, you know? Yeah. I think, because um, Kendall and I just met like just before the pandemic happened, like we had a, and Kendall's a hairstylist and I'm a tattoo artist, so at a certain point we were both mandated to not work because of the restrictions that were happening. So we, uh, our friendship really developed because we got to spend a lot of time together doing like art and, and trying out some music stuff and just kind of like hanging out and just kind of being in that creative mindset and kind of, uh, I guess, like, kind of detaching from, like, what was happening in the world and just trying to be, like, positive about, like, what we had in our, like, immediate environment, you know? So that was, that was kind of a cool um, thing that occurred during all that. Um, so did, I don't know if this, like, was the theme of your latest album, was that, like, because of the pandemic or it just kind of, like, happened? It just happened. Yeah. Yeah, it was, the songs... The, the feel and the the songs were really about it, they weren't directly related to the pandemic mm -hmm. um, but once the album was finished and the songs were put into order I had realized it's 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 a concept album really of of I don't want to say relationships because it's it's it, paints it into too small of a picture it's it's about aspirations and love and coming to terms with that not working out how you had planned and these feelings of it's like the stages of loss like mourning and anger and all of these things and this and the album starts with love you more this kind of optimistic dance song and ends with once more with feeling which is this dark heavy song but it ends with this robotic voice saying you know once once you know once more with feeling you know again you know once more with feeling it's letting you know that as dark as this song is you kind of get the feeling like oh this isn't the last song it's not the it's not my last dance mm -hmm. we're going to we're going to keep moving and we're going to pick ourselves back up and that happened completely I didn't know it was happening. I, the record was done, and I had listened to it through. I was like, oh my god. I, I, <laughs> I had no idea I was on that journey, uh, uh, lyrically. It kind of like matched the mood of the pandemic, actually. Yeah, it, it did. <laughs> like, it just suited it really well. Yeah. Um, I just I felt that was just, I think it was more really important that that whole label, even Boots Black, like your label mates, they were very important for what was going on during the pandemic. It created this whole, oddly enough, really good name for it, Cold Wave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I also want to know, was there like a specific artist that, inf I've tried to pinpoint it, but I can't. It's like, I feel like it's like a bunch of, I hear some artists from the 2000s. I also hear some artists from like the 80s. I hear some artists name from the some, like, Name some for me. <sighs> I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, I've heard some David Bowie influence for sure. Right. Um, I've heard... Oh, 
it is putting me on the spot. No, don't worry about it. It really is. It's like when people ask us, they're like, so what are you listening to on Spotify lately? I'm like, uh, <laughs> like five minutes ago or, or last year? I have no idea. Let me look at my phone. I, I just, um, there's just like, I've, I feel like there is this whole post-punk revival that was going on around the 2000s that I can hear in your music. Right. But I don't hear it the way I it sounded like it doesn't sound like that it sounds yeah more like the 80s than that one so i hear it's that. really funny because you get people that will talk about the band and be like oh it's roxy music david bowie that's what i hear joy division stuff like that and then i talk to people and they're like you guys sound like the weekend <laughs> what yeah and i'm like and that also has to do with like jason's skills as a producer basically taking some sort of context and updating it, maybe. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess The Weeknd has done some like pop when, songs. Like when you listen well, to Blinding well, Lights? Sorry. Yeah, like I'd argue that the last album was a synth wave album. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I was eating at Subway and I heard Blinding Lights. I was like, what is this? I'm like, this, this could be an actor song until he starts singing. And then we don't sound anything alike <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> But uh, the reason why I asked was because you see in the YouTube comments like, oh, could this be any more this or that? But I'm like, oh, that's interesting because it's always a different band. Yeah. Oh, it's Psychedelic. Oh, it's Echo in the Bunny. Oh, it's Interpol. Oh, it's White Lo It's Oh, they're trying to be the cure. I'm like, N actually, you're all wrong. Because <laughs> you put on a song of ours and go, that is that band. You can't, uh, you can't do it. Because... There's too many influences I draw from, and where the difference comes from is I like the instrumentation and the sounds of the 80s because I like analog synthesis. I like the, the, the pop song structure of the 80s. I feel like that's when pop songs it, it were really crafted to perfection with the verse, chorus, verse, chorus kind of. It was really done well. Like those one-hit wonders and all the bands that had 80s hits, those songs still last. Yeah. And what I brought into it with actors is I love techno, I love Vitalik, I love house music, I love dance music, I love Italo disco, um, uh, I, 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 lo I like so many different kinds of things. So I want to bring in those elements into the music. When, I, when we first started releasing actor songs, I thought, wow, this post-punk revival, like um, whether it's like... Uh, Soft Moon, KVB, any bands like that too, I'm thinking, oh, they're gonna, the, the people who listen to this, they're gonna hate us because we don't sound lo-fi, we don't sound like recorded in the basement post-punk, mm -hmm. so it's not true post-punk revivalists. It's, it's the spirit and the ethos of what post-punk was yeah. originally, but today's climate. So that's exactly because like that's kind of what I was saying with the post punk revival that was going on in the 2000s. That's what it reminded me of. I, I just remember the reason why. It's like, it was like just at the time I got really excited at bands like Block Party, sure, and bands like The Killers only because it felt like they were trying to do something that sounded now, but with the 80s yeah. mindset, not specifically the sound of like I don't think you sound like The Killers. No. So that's kind of why I was like I don't think that's what I mean by that. I meant like that post-punk revival thing where you're taking those elements and you're bringing it kind of to the future. Yeah, like those, I, I completely forgot about that movement, but like, like yeah, Interpol, White Lies, Cold Cave had that record, the first Cold Cave record. Um, the Killers Live? Holy man. Like, yeah. I'm not a huge Killers fan. I appreciate them. I think they're really good at what they do. Um, I don't go and put on like Hot Fuss anymore. But yeah. when I saw them live, every, I was like, this is one of the best bands I've seen live. Mm -hmm. it, and then I realized it was like the economy of the arrangements of the songs, they were built to sound great live. Yeah. Everything about it, where the chorus came, what was playing where, and it just translated. And they just like, I've seen them at festivals where they just destroyed bands. And it was like, why are they so good? Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and then that movement kind of faded out, and a lot of those bands are, are still around, and that's great. But then came that kind of low-fi post-punk revival. Yeah. And that's the one that I thought, these people are not going to like us. But I feel like we've been embraced by that world, too. I, just, I feel like you're just... It's like 
you're like in the middle of it. Like you're in that world, but you're also kind of, it's like on your own type of, it's a good thing because like you're yeah. in your own lane. It's not like, because I, I listen to that stuff too, like religiously, but it's also like, it's nice to hear people who are just not afraid to take these elements yeah. that may sound like poppy from like the 80s or may sound like that. Because a lot of people always want to be this like authentic lo-fi band. Yeah, it's boring. Yeah. So well, um, you, you don't sound like Robert Smith enough. Yeah, good. Thank goodness. You know? <laughs> I don't even think Robert Smith wanted to sound like Robert Smith. Right? <laughs> yeah. Do you think Robert Smith is like, oh, I love all these young bands coming up, <laughs> trying to sound exactly like yeah. the Cure from 25 years ago? <laughs> you know? Can you see? Can you can you imagine what his response would be? I mean, I, I had a. I, I think it's cool that he's working with churches That's on that great. one song. That was yeah. kind of cool to see that, but. And I've seen him work with like even bands like Blink-182, so he, I feel like he's more of an embracer, kind of like the yeah, way David Bowie was. For sure. But and, and, that's, and that's, the coffee's kicking in. It's really good coffee here. Hey, <laughs> from but, BC. But that's, that's, the, that's what I like about David Bowie. I don't think our records sound like David Bowie. What I loved about David Bowie is that he wasn't afraid to change genre. He wasn't afraid to embrace androgyny or his feminine side he wasn't afraid to take chances he might not have been an innovator in the way like he didn't um, create glam he didn't create the, the music but he took these influences from the underground culture or the, the the growing cultures in music that he saw embraced it fearlessly and 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 wasn't afraid to to do what he wanted to do and that to me is again that spirit of exploration post-punk and like actors we didn't try to be post-punk or goth or it we just sound how we sound mm -hmm. and and there's also parallels to the 80s happening right now like our relationships with russia the climate change um the economy um there's all these fears that we have that mirror to me what i remember in the 80s as a child being terrified of. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm scared, right now I'm on this kick where I'm really afraid of climate change because we're going to Europe this fall and it's on fire. Yeah. And when I was a kid, I was afraid about nuclear war. Well, now there's, we're afraid of Russia still. And like, so there's all of these things that, it's this parallel and people are like, why is the 80s coming back? It's like, well, because we're in this- Same era. This, we're Same in this thing. cycle of fear and, 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 that's why I think post-punk music and goth music is like, it's cathartic, it, it, it bonds us, and, and it gives us uh, some strength and some hope somehow. And I think, I think that's what's happening. Um, I don't know, for future projects, for any of you, actually, I do want to get to Leathers, actually. Please, please do. But I before always monopolize I get... the conversations. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> But I, I do want to know, like, is there like a, like, is there like, maybe like a techno or trance project that you would be like, I don't know what genre that would like, that interests you the most that people wouldn't really think of that like got you into just like making music. It's obviously like rock always is like that genre that everybody kind of like goes to. But like some other genre from like the 90s, I think. It'd be kind of cool to hear if any of you. Massive Attack was a big one for me. Yeah, yeah. So trip hop. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lots wow. of like kind of that ambient sort of vibe to yeah. Brian, Brian Eno influence stuff and yeah, sort of that like stuff that you would find in like, uh, like a film. Uh, what's the, the Neon Demon guy? Cliff Martinez. Cliff Martinez, who does like a lot of soundtrack work, and we listen to him a lot in the van if we're driving. It's oh, good wow. atmosphere. <laughs> um, how about like, is there like, do you guys take any instrumentation from like bands, for example, like just any band that like you just, oh man, I like the way that sounds. Let me just, not even like take it, but like, because I feel like. I, I really do like the phrase great art steals because it's kind of hard to actually like claim something as yours when there's seven billion people in the world <laughs> yeah. and you're claiming that one thing as yours. So is there anyone that like you've been kind of like, ah, oh, that's so good. Like, let's 
let's sit in the room and just figure something out that's like similar to that but like sounds hmm. or even like just like oh I, ha- I heard this thing and it just came to me after I heard this song something like that That happens all the time. Yeah. 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 But, but it's, it's not so transparent. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I, I'll get excited about a kick drum. <laughs> like, oh, wow, I love the kick in this song. It's just like, doo, doo. like mm-hmm. I, I bet we've been jamming to the last Pixel Grip record. Oh, and, yeah, so and good. So, and someone who hears us might not make that connection, but for me, it's... It's, it's smart, it's sophisticated, I love the tones, and I find that inspiring. So if you hear like a 909 just jamming on an actor song coming out soon, it's probably because I'm ripping it off Pixel yes. Grip. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait for that. Yeah. Well, considering they're going to be in town, would you consider collaborating with Pixel Grip? Ooh. Uh, we would consider it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, just I'm, I'm excited to meet them. I just hope that they don't dislike me because I like them so much. <laughs> I know they'll like the rest of the band. The, that record was definitely our favorite record last year. Same, like, actually. We, like, we listened I mean, to it other so than much. Your, your record came out last year, too. That one was good, too. Oh, I'm thanks. just saying, like, that, that <laughs> one and yours were just, like, the top ones. Jay and I would, that, what's that song, Club Mania? Is that the one? Yeah. We would like Track just, two. yeah, blast that in the car. We were like dancing in the car and someone yeah. was like, yeah. <laughs> I think mine was Drip. I think that's what the song is called, Drip. It's just like, it's because I come from like more of a house music type of background and I just felt that bass and I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> here I go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so good. Um, uh, so I do want to get to Leathers now. Sure. Um, how did this all come to be? Because I guess you mentioned earlier that you were just a YouTube. Um, you're just the first on YouTube that like kind of like sang just every on once Instagram, in a while. Actually, I oh Instagram, yeah, Instagram. It was just like these little short, like 15, 30 second little clips I was posting. Oh um, nice. But yeah, uh, yeah. Jay had seen uh, Jay and I had known each other in Vancouver just through the music scene, and I used to take a lot of pictures in that in the music scene in Vancouver. So. Our paths crossed quite a bit, and um, yeah, he had asked me about uh, coming to the studio. He was working on the production stuff at the time, and he had asked me if I want to collaborate on a song with him. Um, and he's like, think of a name for the project. And uh, <laughs> I was like, let's call it Leathers. And he's like, great, I love it, let's do that. So we started the Missing Scene single, and we did that together. And that was the first time I had ever been in the studio before, so it was like a it was a really, really neat experience for me. I was like incredibly nervous because I was a, a shy singer. And um, so that's how it kind of started. And we had the intention of developing the project further to record an album and all that kind of stuff too. But actors had been so busy with touring uh, on the previous record. We had, you know, we had done almost 200 dates to promote that record. So we did a ton of touring before the pandemic. and. So at that point, Leathers had only released uh, three or four songs. Um, and so we're at the point now where there's more songs out, but uh, nice. <laughs> we're, uh, we're finishing out the, the first full length record, which will be out on, on Artifact at the beginning of next year. Awesome. Oh, um, yes. And yeah, and uh, Kendall and Adam will be joining me on stage too. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Kendall's going to play guitar and, and synths, and Adam will play drums, of course, and, uh, and I will be up there singing. Um, what would you say the difference between your sound and the actor's sound is in your band? I know it's similar, but there is a yeah. difference. I just, what would you say the difference is? Um, I would say it's maybe like if actors is like a bit more dystopian or uh, has like, yeah, more dystopian worldview, like Leathers is a bit more romantic and dreamier and um, yeah, there's like a, like a velvetiness to Leathers that is is uh, maybe actors is more like black leather and leathers is more velvet. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's just a different kind of leather. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> both clothes. Yeah, yeah. So just like different texture. Yeah, yeah, but like suede, exactly. Just a diff- different texture. <laughs> um, after the, I don't know what the plans are after the tour, but af- like after the tour, would you, like for collaboration, we mentioned earlier about Pixel Grip, but like, would you, is there anyone that you 
want to collaborate with so badly just to like pick their brain just any of you <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't know that's tough in my in my like fantasy world I'd like to do like a duet with Brian Ferry or something like that nice. that would be fun <laughs> <laughs> how about drummer wise like any drummer that has inspired you so much that you just like this is why I need to play this instrument well my grandfather was a drummer and that's how I started playing that's pretty epic yeah so that was cool he um, came to Canada from Germany with my dad uh, and brought his drum kit with him and just always played he didn't really play in bands he played in his basement and when I got big enough he showed me how to do it but I mean like when I was growing up it was like stuff that I don't listen to now. Like it was like Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction and Trey Cool from Green Day and <laughs> all these guys that were just like rippers and so cool. Sheila E. Because I am like such a huge Prince and the Time fan. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, um, Jimmy Chamberlain. Yeah, Jimmy Chamberlain from the Smash and Pumpkins. <laughs> Smash Pumps. Stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Like these days, there's so many good players and it's awesome to see amazing musicians pop up from everywhere. Like people that are like older than me and people that are like 19 years old and I see them all the time at home. Um, and that's inspiring enough, I think, just like on a, on a local level almost with, with people that you get to meet. Yeah. So it's like more grassroots, you would say? Yeah, because I get to see these people play shows, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can listen to a record and and it's, and it's cool, and there's stuff on there that's interesting and exciting, but uh, nothing beats uh, going to a show and seeing some band just rip it up. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. Even if they're unknown. Yeah. Well, an 808 drum machine does beat that, but that's Ooh. personal <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Shots fired. That's a running joke. Yeah. <laughs> Jay's going to leave me at home once. <laughs> He has an 808 drum machine in the van with my name on it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you can play 808s live. You got those, like, yeah. what is it called again? Yeah. Uh, it's I, I use, like, electronics when we play oh. as well. So it's all there. Yeah, it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> I think, um, I hope people are more into embracing, like, digital and, and like, not just being like an uh, I know there's a lot of people who are like just analog people um, but I think digital can do more than you think and it gives people a lot of opportunities especially like even per se just like getting your music out there as much as possible or just like if you want to make this drum sound a certain way you don't have to like build the drum a certain way right. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's nice with Jay because he's a producer and he he is he pours over every detail on the record to make it sound exactly like he wants it to sound in his head. Yeah. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that live. Yeah. And I know you talk to people that are like, well, that's cheating. I'm like, why is it cheating? It sounds dope. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I say. And obviously, I want to know... God, I missed the question. What was that question again? I'm six foot three. Uh oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were just talking about how, um, like, kind of a collaboration type of thing. Who would you like to... Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's... So, sometimes people will say to me after a show, or, oh, you should work with this producer or that producer. That would be so cool. And I said, well, why fix it if it ain't broke kind mm -hmm. of thing? You know, it's like everything we do is in-house everything about the sound of actors is because it's the sum of the parts so if you change any of that it changes and that's fine like you know I'm into you know collaborating on things but I can't say there's really a producer or a, you know maybe Flood or Brian Eno I would like to get into the studio with in terms of as a and co-produce something yeah not necessarily actors because i really know what actors is mm -hmm. and the songwriting and the production are the same the songs off the last record start off with like what's the kick pattern and what's the bpm 
and then I come back to the song and go, oh, what does that song make me feel like? And then you write the lyrics for it. And then you don't know what the final song's even gonna be. You just work through it. So working with another producer or another artist might be difficult, but I always really liked um, Jeff Barrow from Portishead. Um, I liked the work that he did with Annika. I liked the work that he did with The Horrors. Um, I like uh, the stuff that, that Flood has done. Um, and then who's the other guy that works with Flood? Uh, Alan. Alan Mulder. Yeah, that's the other guy I like. And so those would be fun people to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of artists, um, I, I was really inspired by the Soft Moon because oh God, yes. he just <laughs> kind of came out of nowhere so and, and had his own vocabulary and was just doing his thing. And, and um, I thought it was just really cool. And, and there was a vibe to it. And one thing I found interesting about the Soft Moon was it, it really had feminine appeal to it for a darker music. And I guess it's the rhythms of it or... Because I put it on and I think like, oh, like, it's, it sounds kind of masculine. But then there's something feminine about it too. And so I like bands that have that element. That's why I'm really... I, I love touring with, with actors in the current lineup and uh, because it... it it feels right. Uh, uh, actors wouldn't sound the same if we were four dudes getting on stage and just raging, you know? And that's what it kind of started out as a little bit more. Not raging, but like, it, it, the stories have a different perspective when they're, when they're expressed from different differently. Yeah. yeah. That totally makes sense. I... I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about the soft moon thing. Yeah. I didn't think about any of this stuff. It, it just happened. Yeah. Um, I used to be afraid to be in bands with women because I used to get so nervous before shows. I'd have to go to the washroom like 20 times. <laughs> so I'd be like, I can't go on tour with a woman because I'm going to be embarrassed having to go to the bathroom all the time. And what if I have to do a poop? You know? Like, <laughs> and then I just got over that and I'm like, life's too short. And it's, it's, been, it's been the best thing ever. Well, coming from a queer space, we kind of like don't really look at that as like a thing anymore. I yeah. think we've, especially, what I've noticed in this new generation. I don't. You probably you probably heard of hyperpop. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. So I've just noticed that it's this whole expression of just not caring about who's what. Yeah. What, like their gender or anything, and I feel like back in the day it was more about if you're this, you're this. If yeah. you're that, you're that. Yeah. But like now I feel like it's just kind of open doors towards just expressing yourself. So sure. maybe that's also another reason why Actors Works in this climate too is because of that whole right. whole thing. You know, and, so. I, and I'm not saying like a band of, of, of four males can't express a femininity. Yeah. Just, it just somehow... It's not the same. It's just somehow like... <laughs> it's not the same. It's, it's, ha- it's, it's happened historically so much through rock music and it was the status quo for so long that I just got bored of it. Mm-hmm. I'm just, when there's a new band, they're like four dudes and like they're, I just like, I, there's nothing you guys can say that I care about anymore. I, I've, I've heard what you have to say. Yeah, the message is kind of Kinda, overplayed. I know I'm painting it really generic and with broad strokes, but, and there's exceptions to the rule all the time, right? But um, hyperpop is something that um, I really got, got interested in. I've been working with an artist in Vancouver called Louise, uh, her name's Louise Burns, and she was in a band uh, as a teenager called Lilix, and they were signed to uh, Maverick. Maverick. Yeah, Madonna's label. Yeah, Madonna's really? label. Yeah. And uh, she's a pop artist, and she was, because uh, a lot of my production had more 80s values to it, and I was a little bit hesitant to get into more modern, really kind of digital type sounds mm-hmm. and she really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff and 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 I, so I started exploring more of that hyper pop genre and different types of kind of alternative just slightly less than mainstream pop and I feel like that's where that those styles of music are where the real exploration and change are coming because they're not beholden to um, this the 80s aesthetic they're, they're not just oh we're revivals they're all bets are off, and they're expressing themselves in every new way, and that's where the most exciting production is happening. It's like uh, bands like Superorganism, I'm super interested in right now. Just like 
song structure is not even a structure anymore. No, I love it's it. A, it's like concrete music. It's like collage, and it's filtered through so many different voices that there's nothing about it that feels like, oh, this is masculine, this is feminine, this is aggressive, this is whatever. It's just a thing it's just feels that exists. And uh, like, I feel like that band just has the perfect name for it because it is just this living, breathing thing that you can't quantify and you don't want to because it's super exciting, super fun, funny, interesting. It like checks all the boxes. It's so cool and I love stuff like that. <clears throat> Actually, I was going to ask about some of the production uh, work you've been doing recently, and uh, if you could tell us a bit more about that, some of the projects you've been working with. Um, as I was saying, I'm just finishing up the Louise Burns record. When we get back from Calgary, the final mixes will be done with that. The Leathers album, we're continuing on with that. We're writing some more material for it, actually. Uh, that's been exciting because I'm getting to work with uh, Kendall as a guitar player more than just bass player. There's more room for exploration for her as an artist. Uh, Shannon's always growing as a lyricist. Uh, Adam's now involved. It's all these fun things that I'm getting to do with them as well. Um, and then, you know, I'm working on uh, a couple tracks with the Canadian TV show called Letter Kenny. Um, oh my God! What? Yeah, so <laughs> I go back and I record two songs um, with Jared Kiso, the creator and the star of Letterkenny. So that's another side of of work that I sometimes do as well. Um, and then production-wise, that's all I'm involved with right now. Mm -hmm. Because also, oh, I'm also doing the new Boot Blacks record. We started doing that a couple, a few weeks ago. Oh, no. So that's going to be poppier. It's it's sexier. It's it's more real and deeper lyrically. It's been really exciting because Panther and I are really good friends, so he's really digging deep. And then, uh, and then it's going to be time to start recording and releasing singles for actors once we get back from our European tour, so early 2023. I was going to ask about that perfect question. Um, uh, I was going to ask... Uh, I was going to ask everybody if they have any questions, but also... You kind of answered my question, which was, what are your future projects? Is there anything in the immediate future that's coming out? Is it just touring? Oh, uh, there's the, we recently, when, sorry, let me back up. When Bootplex was in town working on the record with Jason recently, we uh, also recorded a David Bowie cover, and we did a video. Oh, someone has a question about that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's a different okay. one. Yeah, yeah go different ahead, sorry. One? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it okay if I say what the title sure, is? Sure, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Boys Keep Swinging. So we recorded, uh, Jay produced the, the track, and we all, Kendall played guitar on it, Adam played some drums, I did some singing on it, and Jay played some guitar and did all the production Pan work, and Panther, Panther sings. sings on it as well. Allie plays guitar he on plays it, plays drums too. on it. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and we, uh, we shot a video for it at the Fox Cabaret in Vancouver, and um, that'll be coming out before we go on tour in September, so we're excited to share that. But what's the concept of the video? The concept of the video is everyone is switching things up, so I am in a suit in the role of David Bowie singing. Yes. Panther is a glamorous uh, bearded lady um, <laughs> also singing. And Adam and Jason are also in all their finery, doing the back backing singing. And we were wearing dancing. beautiful dresses, and yeah. wonderful beautiful wigs, wigs and makeup. Yeah, beautiful wigs. It was pretty. It was. It was really fun. Um, and uh, Kendall's just ripping it up on guitar, and so is Allie. Oh, and so good. yeah, we're all all the all the ladies are in suits, and we all um, did a little bit of drag makeup. So we. Uh, yeah, we have five <laughs> five o'clock shadow. It was uh, it was wonderful. Yeah, it was. I do want to do this question before I go to the audience. But what? How would you describe the Vancouver scene in general? And just like from being there, because I've I've been there. It's kind of like hard for me to find people <laughs> to like talk to. It's very clicky. I feel you yeah. either have to know them or you don't type of thing. So you're so, asking about the scene? In yeah, Vancouver? just the Vancouver yeah. scene for music in general. Um, I mean, there's, 
there's so many talented people in Vancouver. There's yeah. lots of different bands. Like the, you know, for every genre, there's a super talented band in that genre. Um, it can be hard. Like socially, it can be a bit difficult. I think people seem to move from other places to Vancouver, so it's harder for people to integrate socially. Or if you come from Vancouver and you've been there since like, um, like you. You know, you went to high school in Vancouver. A lot of those people seem to stay connected and stay friends. So it's kind of more difficult for people to kind of branch out socially, I think. But um, I don't know. I'm a workaholic, so I don't re- and I don't drink. <laughs> so I don't uh, I don't go out too much other than playing <laughs> playing shows in that. But yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I don't know. I grew up in Vancouver, so yeah, it feels like home to me. But mm-hmm. I can't. I I know that it. Socially, it can be challenging, yeah. for sure. How about you? But we are changing that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I do the booking at the Fox Cabaret in Vancouver, which is basically like a community hub. It's a big, giant old theater. We have every different kind of artist, band, performer, drag performer, comedians, everything. And it's a inclusive space for anybody to come and do what they want to do and share their artistry. And Vancouver is really small, and I think that's something that people don't really realize. There's not a lot of venues, but there's a million great bands. Yeah. There's a million great artists. And it is hard to meet people. The thing about Vancouver is it's expensive. Yeah, that's so the people thing. work a lot, they hustle a lot. There's always a struggle to kind of be able to fulfill what you want to do artistically. Um, but it seems to be getting better and better all the time. I mean, we do nights at the club where it's like, we do a four by four night, which is a $4 night. And it's four different bands. It could be a hip hop artist, a country artist, metal band, whatever. Just <laughs> anything goes. And it's really, really cool. And it's really, really exciting. We pack the place out with people that want to see something that's interesting and new. And hopefully through that, they become friends and you know expand the scene a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard to quantify. Like you, you can go to different cities and be like, oh, this city's a post-punk city, or this city's a rock and roll city, or this city's a whatever city. Vancouver's just this weird, weird hodgepodge of everything where, because there aren't a lot of places to play, if you go out any night of the week, you will see a Mm-hmm. A country band with like a metal band and a rock band and a pop band and it's just kind of like whoever's friends with whoever. Yeah, it's really cool. So super similar to what Calgary's like. Because, oh yeah, uh, totally. We, we're losing a lot of venues just because of that. Yeah. It's it's pretty insane. But it's because I just there's this climate. I feel like I'm blaming. I, I shouldn't blame the record industry, but I, I genuinely blame the record industry because. They made this climate where it feels like anyone who's local isn't that good unless they like sell a certain amount of tickets or they get played on the radio all the time. But that's all bought out. Like radios have been bought out by record labels for almost 20 years. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's kind of almost not fair <laughs> for people to discover music that way. So I think like with a place like Vancouver, you know, we're so and, you know, uh, Calgary too it's like geographically isolated like yeah. bands that come from Canada have a lot of obstacles to overcome to tour in the US and to go to Europe and stuff like that um, it's ex- it, you know and because we are on the west coast you know we're separated from Toronto and Montreal which yeah. are the larger music markets in Canada so there's like that hurdle of overcoming just the geographical aspects of uh, being in a band too, so and yeah. you know, and if our you know our nearest largest market to play other than Calgary would be like Seattle, mm-hmm. um, and you have to have special paperwork to to do that, which is a financial hurdle to overcome. So it's uh, it can be tricky for sure. But there is there's so many talented bands in Vancouver that it is a shame that some bands just kind of get stuck in Vancouver because of those obstacles. It's um so it's just what I've seen like this pattern of. All our bands try to go to Vancouver, and that's their ending spot of <clears throat> touring. But then they end up working because it's very hard to afford it, and then they end up falling in love with it because there's beaches and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. So I feel like that's just like an ongoing pattern that always has happened. But um, I do. Uh, I want to ask more questions, but I should get to the Q and A. If anyone here has any questions, that'd be awesome. But. If, well, I've asked, uh, I've asked 
most of what I wanted to ask already. So. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Anyone on Twitch? Do you have any questions to anybody? Hello. Oh, Jess has a question. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, 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 it's so amazing. good. I feel alive. <laughs> Just I, I, sa the I saved the, my coffee experience for here because I got up this morning and I like slept walk over to the Tim Hortons just to get like an egg muffin thing. And I was like, no, I'm not going to have a coffee here. I need to wait. No, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Actually, I did have one more question. Are you guys in town for the entire weekend? We are staying. We'll be hanging out tomorrow night. And then I think we head home son uh, Saturday. Fair enough. Um, so this is the this is an interesting question. Um, it's for Kendall. How did you come up with the interpretation of the Killing Joke song? Oh, look at oh, that. somebody's checking the gram. Yeah, it's not just for nobody. <laughs> wow, that makes me happy. Yeah. TikTok. Um, TikTok that went viral. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the TikTok. We oh, that's another story, but. Um, <laughs> I love guitar and I love like dissonant guitar playing. Um, it's just kind of something that I like to learn when I'm not swamped with actors and leathers things to work on. Um, so yeah, sometimes I just sit around at home and I like learn songs by Killing Joke or like the Jesus Lizard, or, like Adrian Ballou, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was just another song I kind of dug into and then combined influences to come up with that. But thanks for watching my Instagram. <laughs> who, who was that? Let me, let me see who asked that question. It was, <laughs> their username is Goth Fluid Transfer. Oh, Goth Fluid. I yeah. recognize your name. <laughs> kind of a cool name. <laughs> Does anyone have questions? Anyone else? Do you have questions? I can ask a question. Um, I'm just, I'm always curious about bands that I like, what they were listening to or what each individual was listening to as a kid that just blew your mind and changed everything. Um, my mom's boyfriend when I was about 10 years old um, was a big David Bowie fan and he, lent, he gave me his cassette of uh, Ziggy Stardust and I would listen to that out on headphones when I was falling asleep because I had won a little ghetto blaster at the 7-Eleven that was, had a draw. And I was like, I'm going to win that. And I was like buying these Slurpees. So I won this ghetto blaster. So I was a 10-year-old with a ghetto blaster with this cassette of Ziggy Stardust. And the stories he was telling and the world he created. And the guitar playing that the Mick Ronson guitar souls that felt like they were spaceships. And that, that was the first time that my head just was like... <laughs> Janet Jackson. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. That my mom life. was a huge <laughs> Janet Jackson fan and had all her all her records and would play them all the time. And I would steal them and take them to school with me and my my little CD Walkman. As someone that loved drums, like listening yeah, to was, the production on like Rhythm Nation, like that Jimmy Jam Terry Lewis production. I was it's going just to like, ask about Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I'm a producer nerd. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> they played in the time, and yeah. then they went on and made. Control and Rhythm Nation and all those awesome, awesome records. But man, that Rhythm Nation record when I was a little kid is wild. I was like, I never heard anything like that before. Yeah, that whole new Jack Swing thing that was happening. That kind of not, not new Jack Swing. It was kind of like what Prince was forming in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Type that type of crowd. They all hung out with each other. Yep. I love that sound so much. Sorry, that just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shannon. Um. <laughs> Let's see. Live Through This by Hole was a very important record for me. Um, just seeing like her, I loved her style too, like the kind of baby doll, like vintage baby doll dresses and the fact that she played guitar and she had like this growl in her voice. It was like, it was really inspiring to me as like a shy person. Oh. So it like, yeah. And those, song, those songs are good. I really like the lyrics in those songs too. I can see that now in Leathers, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I want to say um, probably My Bloody Valentine would be one of the earlier ones that like, really got me into guitar. And 
I don't know. You know when you come across a new band and you're just like, wow, I've never heard anything like this and it just means everything to you. Yeah. That's one of them. Oh, my God. Oh, I want to ask more, but I have to. <laughs> I have to. I have to. I just have to keep it to a... Because it's just going to be like three hours long. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming out to Cafe Clutch. We really do appreciate it. And Thanks for having us. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for responding to my weird TikTok. <laughs> I just was like, maybe I can try. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks for letting me sit in. Um, like I said, I will be rebroadcasting this interview on my uh, podcast, Nightmare Delirium, which is available at cgsw.com. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> which you. is the local radio station that plays local music in Canada. Mm. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Twitch, for everything. Um, Obviously, you can check these guys out tonight. People in the chat, you better be at Actors Tonight, please. <laughs> I think most of them will be there, because most of them came and saw the thing, and they're going to be there. Yeah. But thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, actors, for coming. Thank you. Um, thank you. We will see you tonight. Awesome. And I'm going to end the stream. Bye, everybody. Bye.